Perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take these values and we want to um, run them through an expression. We said that our expression for uh, the spiral, we, did, we have two expressions, x equals cosine of x times x, and y, sorry, let's use t again to be consistent with uh, what we saw earlier, sine of t times t. All right, this is just a note I'm going to leave in my file um, so that we can execute our uh, expression. All right, so the expression object is going to be found in our math script. Go ahead and grab the expression object. This allows us to evaluate an expression. Okay, it comes with a predefined expression inside, but we're going to go ahead and edit it. And if we zoom in, uh, you'll notice that on the input, it has uh, a variable, uh, a use, user interface set of buttons that allow us to add or remove inputs to this object. I only need one input. And I want to go ahead and right click X and define it to be understood as T. So I'll rename my input to T. And that's just so that this can be uh, consistent with the expression that we uh, were looking at earlier. So once I have T, I'm going to go ahead and double click my expression at the center. Now I can start to design my own expression. Well, I don't really need to design it because I already know what it's going to be. We want the cosine of T inside of parentheses times T. I hit OK. I'm going to put the result of my series in there. And now we have the resulting values coming from cosine of T times T. So I'm going to hold Alt because this is working correctly. I want to make the other uh, expression. I'm going to hold, uh, start to drag and tap Alt, and this will create a duplicate object for me. So now I can double click this object and type in the sine of t times t. Okay. Both of these ex expressions seem to be working. Um, they're gray, not red. All right, and the next step is that we want to we want to group this just so that we know these are our spiral expressions. Give that a little label, and now I want to use these values to define the x and y coordinates of a set of points. So let's go to the vector tab, go to point and do point x, y, z. Now if I use my expressions into x and y, I now get my spiral. As I change the step size, the points are closer or farther apart, and I can increase the number of points and my spiral grows. Right, so I'm going to keep them relatively close together. Now I'm starting to uh, see the spiral that I was expecting, right? And this is, just to clean this file up a little bit, let's label this by grouping it. Point X, Y, Z. All right, so now we have points in space that are defined by this uh, expression that we saw somewhere we were inspired by and we wanted to implement, right? So the next thing is let's do a couple of things with the points that result from those expressions. The first thing we want to do is let's just draw a curve through those points. So if we go to the Curve tab under the Spline sub-tab and use the Interpolate Curve object, we can go ahead and use our points as the input for V, and those are our interpolate points that allow us to draw the curve. Right, and again, as I shift my sliders for the step or the number of points that I'm going to create, I get a different result for my spiral. Okay. Um, and while we're here, let's go ahead and do one more thing. Right? We have a spiral, but we want to start to create objects along the spiral. 
right? So we have the points. So let's go ahead and see if we can't create some geometry with those points. If we go to the primitive tab under curve, and let's create a circle, and we'll just use the point x, y, z result to define where we will, we should have some circles, right? We can go ahead and use a slider also to to find the radius of the. Right. So now what we've done is we've uh, kind of executed the um, predefined algorithm that we wanted to work with, right? The spiral. We got something that is generally spiraling. Uh, but what are some of the kind of um, implicit conditions to what we're working with here? Well, we have a curve, and it's defined by points that are not equally spaced. So subsequently, our circles are not equally spaced. Their spacing increases as we move along the spiral. And that's because we're using this uh, pair of mathematical expressions, right? Uh, so if we wanted to have, let's say, some objects that were consistent in size, but were um, also had consistent distribution around the circle, we have to do something else with what we've um, got at the end of our uh, little algorithm, which we'll say this part here is create a spiral. That's the algorithm. So it leaves us a little bit limited in terms of what we're getting at the end and what we can do next, right? So we would have to somehow be working with this curve, maybe break it down further and dividing it into points, etc. cetera. Um, and part of the reason is that um, we've got our spiral and it's all being calculated at once, right? We see only one result. So there's only kind of one step, and it's in a, uh, not too complicated, but uh, through these two expressions, one step's getting us the spot. So uh, we're going to call that all at once uh, calculation of our algorithm. Right? So um, the difference would be that, or a contrasting approach to working with spiraling, which is what we're going to do next, would be to start to define very simple operations that in combination then result in spiral, as opposed to starting with a spiral, finding it, and then figuring out what we have to do with it next, right? So this is very definitely parametric thinking, right? We define the ranges of possible values uh, for all of our sliders. Those are our parameters. We define an algorithm, and we got a result, right? So this spiral that we see now is one possible version of all the spirals that can come from these two parameters and all their possible states. All right, so this is a, um, a good example of parametric logic and parametric thinking. And it is algorithmic also because, again, we're using uh, these set of expressions to create an algorithm, which we'll call create a spiral. Um, but there's very minimal control, right? And we have to then kind of unthink what we just did in order to keep going from here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, address any questions that you might have at this point before we move on. Um, if you have any questions about the expressions for the spiral or uh, what the difference would be between the parametric or algorithmic uh, logic, let's go ahead and address those now. Okay, it seems like everyone's comfortable with what we've gone over thus far, so let's go ahead and move forward. So I'm going to save this file and close it, and bounce back over to the PowerPoint.